So today I thought I'd do something a bit different. I <coughs> thought I'd show you Debbie's plot, our perennial plot. And it's designed to be a bit prettier than my plot. My plot's designed for productivity and year-round growing and all that. <coughs> Whereas Debbie's is designed to be, well, hands off, not much work, quite pretty productive in summer not so productive year round but we're working on it when we designed this plot it was around the idea of little and often gardening so basically sort of plant and forget it and it works pretty well I would say anyway let me just sort of step you around I'll show you what's going on so we've got a few red cabbages here most of the red cabbages are back at home in the kitchen garden a few strawberries just for snacking We've got this hazel hedge, which is really lovely, although it takes a bit of management. And we've got another one at the back. Got a few cauliflowers in here. And then this is our main herb garden. We've got a few herbs outside the kitchen door, but uh, you know this is where we grow most of the herbs in these two beds. And we've got another little one over there as well. It's looking a bit wild at the moment. So, sweet corn, we've got two successions. This is the young one, and that's the old one. They're only about three or four weeks behind each other, but uh, hopefully that'll translate into one or two weeks of actual staggered harvest. Uh, we've got some uh, rhubarb there and some more rhubarb over in the far corner. And then down here, primarily, We've got beans, you can't really see them very well, but they are growing quite well, getting a little bit of slug damage on them. And then we've got onions down the front and shallots. And that's just because we kind of ran out of space for the onions. And most of the onions and shallots are over here. So most of these are the long red Florence, coming on quite nicely actually. We've got another bed of those in the kitchen garden and there's a few Zabrun mixed in here. I don't know which ones are which, to be honest, I don't think any, any of us know. Uh, but uh, the Zabrun didn't germinate very well. The Long Red Florence did really nicely. I'm pretty pleased with the size of those. And then most of these down here are Carmen and Red Baron. And they're our primary storage onions. And right now we're eating North Holland Blood Red, Lilia and Tough Ball. So they're the overwintered onions that we've got and they'll keep us going till August. So we generally clear this bed in August. This year we've done something slightly different. We've just taken the garlic out here down this edge and we've left these weeding paths in between. Our intention is that in these weeding paths and around the edges, we're going to plant our autumn and early winter brassicas, which are growing quite nicely at the moment in the greenhouse back at home. And the hope, <laughs> the hope is that they won't interfere with the onions and the onions won't interfere with them uh, from planting time, which will be in a few weeks time, and onion harvest time, which will be a few weeks after that. So hopefully they'll sort of survive each other. And that will mean we get a really nice uh, double crop off this bed. Uh, well, we'll have to see how it goes. I think it might work. And then next year, I think this is going to be potatoes, this bed. So there we've got some of the brassicas we're eating at the moment. Some lovely calabrese down there, for example. And a few more red cabbages and a few more cauliflowers. And then we've got apple trees all the way down there. And there's a pretty good crop of apples on those trees. You might not be able to see them from this distance. Can you see them now? And uh, that is pretty good because the, allot the harvest of apples on my plot is pretty dire. I think there's only two trees that have got a decent uh, fruit set. So. Then we've got the currants. So we've got, I think, red, white, and black currants there. 
loads more, oh, and pink, I think, loads more black currants down here, getting a bit overtaken by um, bindweed. But fortunately, that's what kind of happens on a plant and forget plot, you know, that only gets, I don't know how much time probably we spend on this plot, probably seven hours a month or something like that. Not very much time, really. Um, and then we've got asparagus. This is, it, it is in its third year. We decided not to harvest it because it's looking a little bit weak. Um, so harvesting that next year. And then this was my early kale bed. And we're taking that out and putting our early autumn brassicas in there and late summer brassicas in there. So, and down here. And then we've got pear trees and plum trees here. And then fig tree here, more rhubarb here, a few more onions underneath there. And the beech, the hazel hedge running along the back there. And that is pretty high. And I think we've got cherry tree here. And honestly, I can't remember what this one is. Plum, I think, probably. And artichoke there, globe artichoke down there. And obviously that <laughs> hazel hedge needs trimming. It's pretty prolific, but it, it does look lovely. And on this side of the apple trees, we've got red gooseberries, uh, more red gooseberries, and the uh, Jerusalem artichokes, and they need tying back a little bit so that we can actually get into the shed. But they grow so incredibly fast that um, they kind of take you by surprise, really, at this time of year. So that, I think, is pretty much everything that's going on on Debbie's plot. And we've done a lot of work on this plot to try and make it really low maintenance. I mean, part, a lot of perennial planting, a lot of thick compost mulches. This is what we've been using on this plot this year. And uh, I think we've had probably 10, 12 bags of that, something like that. So thick compost mulching, wood chip paths, no maintenance there. Um, well, maybe a little bit of topping up in winter. And just generally a lot of plants that cope well with low to moderate amounts of water. Um, so yeah, it works pretty well. Uh, the other thing I'll just say is that I am watering the onions at the moment. I've watered nematodes in for onion fly and uh, yeah, I'm giving them a good watering right now. And I'll sort of stop watering in two or three weeks time. But I'm giving it a good soak every uh, week really. And the reason I'm doing it rather than Debbie is because she is beavering away very hard at the moment on uh, painting the kitchen. So, so there we go. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. I'll see you soon.